Hi everyone, I'm Kay. Welcome back to the Ants documentary channel. So, how do scientists classify ants? Well, we could go full textbook mode and build the proper classification tree like this. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, subfamily, genus, species. But let's be honest, unless you are about to sit for an entomology exam, that might be a little too intense for you. Alright, before we dive in, let's get one thing straight. Ants are divided into two big evolutionary groups, Poneroids and Formicoids. Now Poneroids, they're the ancient ones. Less social, more independent, often out there hunting solo. You probably haven't met many of them unless you've gone digging. Formicoids now, those are highly social. You see them building trails in your garden, stealing crumbs from your picnic or setting up massive underground cities. These are the ants that most of us know. So in this video, we are focusing on the formicoid subfamilies, because when you cross path with an ant, chances are it was one of them. Let's start with the five main subfamilies of the formicoids group. These five main categories are the groups that include the most numerous, widespread and ecologically powerful ants on Earth. Formicina, the acid sprayers. These ants don't stink, they spray acid. Formic acid, to be exact. What do they have in common? A single petiole node. They have an acidopore to spread acid on threads. They are super common in both forests and urban areas. Let me give you some examples of ants that are part of this group. Camponotus. A third of the species belonging to the Formicinae are actually Camponotus species, the famous carpenter ants. Formica. Some species are mound builders or slave makers. Lysus. Small, classic garden ants, specialized in raising aphids. These guys are some of the most numerous species in the temperate zones, but they can't compete with the next group. Mormesine, the largest group. Mormesine is the largest ant subfamily with over 7,000 species. This subfamily contains half of the ant species of the world. They have two petiole segments and often a functional stink. They farm fungus, raise aphids, build huge colonies or simply go solo. It depends on the species. They are literally everywhere on the planet, except Antarctica. Some examples of species for you guys. It's a real best of. Solenopsis, fire ants. Ouch! Messer, the harvesters that collect seeds. Feidoli, you know them by their giant-headed soldiers. Atta and Acromyrmex, the famous leafcutter farmers. And Mormica, cold weather champions. Next group is already more selective. Dolicoderine, the chemical warriors. They don't stink, but they do smell. These ants secrete strong smelling chemicals when disturbed and use different sorts of chemicals to defend themselves. They only have one petiole node and their colonies can be massive. Some species are incredibly invasive. That allows them to dominate many urban and tropical ecosystems. Some examples of species. Linepithema, the Argentinian ant, famous for its global super colonies. Tapinoma, odorous house ants. They smell like coconut when crushed. But please don't crush them to check this fact. Iridomyrmex, fast and super shiny. I mean, their name literally means rainbow ant. Ponerine, the primitive predators. These are ancient solitary hunters. Therefore, they don't act like all the other ants. They have powerful mandibles, a stinger and simple social structures. They have a single petiole segment. Many are active hunters or scavengers, not team players. They're found mostly in tropical forests and leaf litter. You might know some of the species in this subfamily. Odontomachus, trap jaw ants with record-breaking mandible speed, faster than a bullet. Pachycondyla, they're tough, ground-foraging predators. And Harpignathus. In this species, some workers can become queens. And jump. Okay, let's talk about the last subfamily of the top five, the Dorylinae. Most of them are blind, nomadic, unstoppable with their impressive stinger. Most of these ants have no permanent nests. They raid in a huge coordinated swarms. Their queens are massive egg-laying machines. And some spend most of their life underground, so you will probably never see them. Again, here are some more examples of species you might know. Aceton, the famous New World Army ant, and the Realis, the African driver ant. This group is less diverse, but their colonies can reach millions. No, seriously, millions. So those are the big five, the subfamilies of ants you're most likely to encounter in the wild. But of course, evolution will throw a few curveballs. 
what's not in the top 5? There are more subfamilies, but they are smaller, rarer and let's be honest, kinda strange. But they tell us a lot about how ants evolved. I will give you a link in the description for an article about the 11 other subfamilies and the 6 subfamilies that did not make it and went extinct. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe, that helps us a lot. See you next time!